Now let's talk a little bit about functions in Haskell. So we've already seen quite a few built-in functions. For example, we have put string ln where we pass a string into that function and it prints something or puts something to the console. We also have print. We talked about some array built-in functions, which were like head, tail, init, and last. We talked about some math built-in functions like square root, um, rounding, floor, ceiling. Those were all built-in functions in Haskell. And then there's also functions that aren't built-in that we can create. And there's one that is kind of pre-made for us. We had to write it, but it's pre-made for us. And that's this main equals do. And this has been here all along. And this is the function that's been being called when we run our WinGHCI, when we push this red button. If we read about it, underneath it says evaluate main expression. So when we push the red button, it calls that main expression and it logs hello user and hello world. So let's take a look at that code again. So a function has two parts uh, in Haskell. On the left side is the function name. And on the right side is what we want the function to do. In this case, do. And if we want to print multiple things, they go underneath do uh, and tabbed in. So this is all considered the right hand side of the function. And so we do multiple things on the right hand side. And then this main function gets called over here when we push the red button, right? So now we can create our own functions. So now let's create our own function in Haskell. Before we do that, let's go ahead and rename this first and rename the bottom one here last. And we'll see why in just a minute. Okay, so then we come above the main function that runs when we push the red button, right? And we're gonna create our own function. Now we need to give our own function a name and I'm going to name this function say hi. And the name always goes on the left hand side of the function. And I'm going to say it equals. And the right hand side of the function is what happens when we call say hi, the name say hi. So on the right hand side, we want to put string ln and we're going to say hello user. And our function kind of describes what it does, right? So say hi is the name of it and it describes what the right hand side does. In this case, it puts to the console, hello user. So that's our function. Remember, uh, we don't need do. We only need do if we were to print multiple things. So we could say do and then print multiple things, but we're not gonna do that yet. So if we only are putting one thing to the console, we can just say it equals this. And let's save it, and this is now we have our function, but it's not going to run because we never call our function. So let's just take a look at that and make sure. What we should get is this main function evaluated, and it should just put first and last. This is here, but it never gets evaluated. So let's go over, clear it, refresh, and evaluate main. And you're going to see it prints first and last. And the reason it does that and it doesn't call this is because we never said in this main function, hey, we need we want to call this function. We just declared it. So we said this is a function, but we never we never said when we're going to call it. So to do that, we can come in between first and last. And we call our function by just typing say hi. And that will call this say hi function, and it's going to do whatever's on the right hand side of that function. And you'll notice Excuse me, you'll notice I put it between first and last. Um, so remember the main function, the do function, it prints everything in order from top to bottom. So it'll start with this, then it'll call this say hi function, which will put hello user to the console, and then it's gonna jump back down here to put string ln, and it's gonna put last. So it'll be first, hello user, because we're calling this, and then last. So let's save it with control S, Head over to WinGHCI, and we're going to clear it, refresh, and evaluate main. And so we have first, hello user, and last. So there we've written our first function in Haskell. Now we're going to use this say hi function to do multiple things. So if we want to print out multiple things with a function, we're going to put do on the right hand side, and then we're going to put the things we want to do underneath the function. So in this case, we want to put hello user, then we want to put, uh, let's go with welcome. And so now we're doing two things in say hi, we're putting hello user and then welcome. So this is the order, right? So it evaluates main when we push the red button, and then it puts first, it runs say hi function and it 
runs everything inside a say hi function. It doesn't just go to the next one after it does one step. It runs everything. So it comes up to say hi and evaluates everything on the right hand side slash underneath the function. So in this case, it's going to do first, then it's going to run say hi, and it's going to put hello user, then it's going to put welcome, then it's going to jump back down to main because it's out of instructions and say hi. Once it gets to the bottom of this and there's nothing left, it's going to come back to main and it's going to put last. Let's test that. Control S to save. Head over to WinGHCI, clear it, reload it, refresh, and evaluate main. You're going to see it does first, then hello user, we're in the say hi function now, then welcome, and then it prints last. Okay, so that's multiple things in the say hi function. Now let's take a second to talk about types with our functions. So when we made variables, right, and we said score equals 30, and we know 30 is an int, right, an integer, so we can say score colon colon int and we're saying that hey score is going to be an int and then we declare the int and set it equal to score now we're going to do something really similar with functions um, in this case our main function is always going to return a specific type we haven't talked about this type yet but we're going to right now so we're going to say main above our main function right uh, just like we did our variable up here. So I'll type this back in just for clarity. Score int. Now we set score to 30. So we have main equals do. And above main, we want to set the type of this function. And this is called a return value. We're going to talk more about return values in the next video. But for now, we're going to set it equal to uh, a function called IO. And that just means we're printing or putting something to the console for now. So if we're printing or putting something to the console inside of our main function, which is going to be almost always, we're going to say IO, and then we're going to add parentheses on the end. So this is a bit confusing, but for now, this means that we're going to end our main function with printing or putting something to the console. And you'll notice up here, now we need to type out say hi, because we haven't done this yet, right? It's also a function. Um, and what are we doing in this one, right? We're still putting something to the console. So it's going to have the same kind of function definition for it. So say hi, colon, colon. And this, the last thing in the say hi is we're putting something to the console, right? So it's still going to be this IO type with these parentheses. Even if it were just one thing in say hi and we're still putting it to the console like this, the type would still be IO because we're still putting something as the only thing we're doing inside of it to the console. So I'm going to put those back in. And we're just going to make sure this still works. So all we did now is type out our functions. We added types to them. So we said main is going to, the last thing inside of main is going to put something to the console. And we said that is how we declare that is IO and then parentheses. And then the same thing for say hi, because we're doing the exact same thing. The last thing in say hi is putting something to the console. And we're saying it's going to do that by writing IO and then parentheses. Control S to save. Head over to WinGHCI, and we're going to clear it, reload, and run. And you'll notice we get the exact same results as we did before, but now we've typed out our functions. So we put the types above, and it just adds a little bit of clarity to our program so that we can kind of see what's going on at first glance, and we don't have to guess. Now let's talk about calling a function multiple times. So we have the say hi function. We called it once inside of main. What happens if we call it three times? Say hi, say hi, say hi. Here's the order that it will happen in. So do runs from top to bottom, main equals do. It puts first. Then it runs the entire say hi function. So it's going to print put hello user and then welcome. Then it's going to run the second say hi function. It's going to do it again, put hello user and welcome. And then it's going to run it again and for a third time put hello user and welcome. And then finally it's going to put this last to the console, right? So let's save it. Go over to win GHCI, clear it, reload and evaluate it and you're going to see this is the first say hi this is the second say hi and this is the third say hi call for the function right so this can come in really come in handy in that we can take this logic out instead of doing this three times this is a little harder to read right so instead of doing that we took that logic put it inside of say hi and then we just called say hi inside of main and it looks a lot cleaner and it's just a lot nicer to read and yeah, it's a lot easier to read.
So let's keep going. So now we're going to talk about passing a parameter to our function. So we're going to get rid of the two say highs and just leave one. And then up top here, we're just going to leave put string ln hello user. So this will run first, it'll put hello user, and then it'll run last. Um, but now we want to pass a parameter. Let's say instead of hello user, we want to greet the user by their name. Uh, so we can pass what's called a parameter into our function, into our say hi function, and then we can say hello and use that like as a variable and say hello name. So to do that, uh, for say hi, we're going to go on the left hand side here. And if we want to pass something into say hi, on the left hand side, we're going to leave a space and then we're going to pass the parameter. So in this case, we want to call it name. We want to pass a name into say hi. So say hi, and it's going to take in somebody's name, George, Mike, Tom, Jill, Anna, Anna, any, anything like that. And on the right hand side, it's going to put to the console and remember our string concatenation. So we could do something like instead of hello user, we could have a string of hello space plus plus name. And in this case, remember variables, instead of saying in do, instead of saying let name equal something, we're saying, hey, here's the name that we're passing in. And we're going to print out hello and the name we passed in. Um, and now that we have that, we need to slightly change what is our function signature. So we're still putting something, right? We're still putting something to the console. So that's that IO part. Now before that, we're passing in a name, right? And a name is going to be some type of string. Uh, and to do that, and we need to change our function signature. So we need two parts to our function signature now. Um, we need to tell it that, hey, the last thing we're going to do is put something to the console. Remember, that's the IO part. But we're also passing in a name. And we're going to put that before we, we're going to pass in the name, and then we're going to put something to the console. And the name we know is going to be a string. Um, so type string like this. And then we're going to add an arrow. Remember the arrows from before, but they went the other way. And we're going to add an arrow, and we're going to say, hey, we're going to return, or we're going to, our last part of our function is going to put something to the console. So one more time, the say hi function takes in this name parameter. It's going to be a string, and it's going to return, or it's going to, the last thing it's going to do is put something to the console, which is this bit. Now down here, we can't just do say hi anymore. If we try and run that, it's expecting you to say hi to someone. And to do that, we put a space, just like we did put string ln, right? Um, we've used parameters before. We've actually passed first. This is the parameter for put string ln. Last is the parameter for put string ln. And we pass parameters into print. We've seen these before, but now we're using our own custom function, right? So we still put the space, and we want to put someone's name, so Mike. And now we're going to say hi to Mike. So let's save it, Control S. So Mike goes in. It, it my Name becomes Mike. And then we put hello plus plus, and we know name is Mike, so it's going to be hello Mike. Let's go over here, clear it, reload and run it, and it's going to say first, hello Mike, last. Okay, back we go. Now let's suppose we want to say hi to multiple people, right? We can do that. Um, this is the beauty of parameters. So we can do say hi, space, and instead of Mike, let's do Anna. And let's say hi to a third person, Elsa. So there we go. Now we're going to say hi to Mike, Anna, and Elsa. So the first time, here's what happens, right? We run main. First gets put to the console. Then we run say hi with Mike as the parameter. So Mike goes in his name. And then we put to the console, hello, Mike. Then we run say hi again with Anna. Anna comes in as the name. We put to the console, hello, Anna. Elsa comes in to say hi. And then we do put string ln, hello, Elsa. And then finally we put last. So last. So control S to save. And we go over to WinGHCI, clear it, reload and evaluate. And you're going to see first, hello Mike, hello Anna, hello Elsa, last. So now let's talk about passing multiple parameters to a function. So we're going to leave this be for now. We're going to come up here to the say hi. And now we don't only want to get the name right? We also want to get an age for each person. So we can say name, space, age. So now we have the say hi name for the function. 
and we pass in a name and an age on the left hand side. Those are our parameters, name and age. Then on the right hand side, we still put something to the console, in this case a string, right? We put a string to the console. And so now we need to change our function signature to match these parameters. And what that means is name was a string, and now we're also passing in an age, and an age in this case is going to be an int, right? Some type of number, so age is int. And then once we've covered our parameters, so name is string, age is int, notice we go in order, and then we tell the function signature what the result is on the right hand side. In this case, we're putting something to the console, and we know that the right type for that is IO and the parentheses there, right? So this is our new function with two new with a new parameter of age. And we need to be able to use the age on the right hand side, right? We don't want to just pass age in and not use it. So we can say put string ln hello plus plus name. So hello in this case it would be Mike first. And then plus plus and then we're going to add a string. You are and then we want to add the age, right? Plus plus age. Now, we can't just use age because inside of put string ln, we know put can't do a number. And in this case, a number is coming in. The age is a number. Um, and we had a built-in function we used before called show. So we can do show age. And that'll say, hey, take this number and we want to turn it into a string so we can put it to the console. So inside of this concatenation, we're passing age to show, just like we've done before. Plus plus years old. So one more time, we pass in name and age into say hi, and then we put string, we concatenate everything together. Hello, name, in this case will be Mike, you are, and then we whatever the age that was passed in, we want to show that age as a string, and then years old. Um, and our new function signature, right, name string, age is an int, and the last thing we do in say hi is we put something to the console and that's this IO with parentheses. So down here now, if we try and run this, we're missing an age. We, we're missing an age for say hi. So we need to pass in an age here for say hi. Haskell won't like it if we don't pass in all the parameters that we said will go in. So say hi Mike and maybe Mike's 27. Say hi Anna and maybe Anna is 19. Say hi Elsa and maybe Elsa is 24. So we pass when we pass in parameters to a function call, so we're calling it here, the first parameter is Mike, and that's the name, and the second parameter is age, and that's a number. And notice we just put spaces between the parameters we want to pass in. So when we save this, and we go to run it, we should get, hello Mike, you are 27 years old, hello Anna, you are 19 years old, and hello Elsa, you are 24 years old. So save it. Go to WinGHCI, clear, reload, and evaluate main. And here we are. First, hello Mike, you're 27. Hello Anna, you're 19. Hello Elsa, you're 24. And then last.